Good morning, and today we are making something new. I'm Cindy. Welcome to my channel. It is a beautiful day here in the Finger Lakes, and today we are making a writing board. What's a writing board, you might say? Well, not all journals have them, but a writing board is something that you can slide behind your writing so that as you're doing it you have a harder surface to work on because let's face it sometimes as our we're creating our journals they get a little chunky and so it makes it hard to write on you know that's going to have cards in it that has stuff on it so if you wanted to write here you have a whole bunch of layers that you have to try and work on so you put a writing board behind it and now you have something a little bit harder, a little bit soft, a little bit easier to actually write on. I'm going to give you a sneak peek at the front cover of this particular journal. This is a new one that I'm working on, and yes, that means I now have three journals in progress. This is unusual for me, but I just, I found these pictures and I fell in love with them until they have become my cover for this particular journal, it doesn't have a name, signatures are not yet sewn in, it's very much in the beginning process, but I decided it needed to have a writing board added to it, and I thought today I would go through how I plan to do that. So this is going to be the pocket for it, and it's going to slide right in and out here. So the first thing I'm going to do is corner around my edges, and I realize it's solid, but I didn't have... Well, I'll show you the piece that I'm going to use to cover this in a minute, and you'll see why I'm not using something similar. Okay, there we go. So that's going to be the pocket that goes in there. I have this absolutely wonderful uh, material that looks, or paper, that looks like wallpaper material. It is not. It's just plain cardstock that's actually a very thin cardstock. So it's going to be perfect for covering this. And maybe it doesn't quite match that quite so well as I thought it did. But we'll worry about that later. Because that we're going to set aside for now. And we're going to deal with it later. That pocket needs to be covered and needs to have things on it. We'll deal with that later. So this particular, this is a, a journal itself is, let's get it to the right side up, is basically uh, six inches it's really five and a half, but with all the extra trim and lace on it, it's six inches wide by eight and a half tall. So my board here is, I have to put my glasses on to read my piece here, is about four and three quarters by seven and a half. And then this is a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And what I and all I did for my board, this is off of a townhouse crackers box. So this is just the back of a townhouse crackers box. And what I want to do is make sure that I leave enough space. And I'm going to go ahead and do this to it. so that I know about where I want it. And I only need to come in about an inch at the top, and I'm not really, I'm gonna open that up and just fold that in so I know where my folds are gonna be. I'm gonna bring this up. Come on, hold still, it does not look like it's straight. There we go, now it's straight. I'm going to fold that up right against it. There. Now it's a little too much on that. I don't need that much. So I will get out my handy dandy little trimmer, which is my new trimmer. Uh, after some consternation in trying to figure out how to get it to work on the, the arm, getting the arm to work. It was very, very stiff to start with. I will admit that I do like this trimmer because it has a little wire in there, a little guide wire that tells me exactly where I'll be cutting, and I kind of like that. All right, so now I have my piece ready to trim up, and I'm going to do this little trick of cutting into the edges a little bit here to make that fold a little bit better. It 
This is really not that much different from putting a cover on. I probably make my pieces too wide. I'm going to try going a little bit narrower here. I've seen some people do these very, very narrowly, and they're really good at it. My eyeball is not quite as good as perhaps others have theirs. All right. So I'm going to put that down, and I'm going to go ahead and glue these. I probably should just take that right off, right? Or do you think I should? Okay. I'm going to pause my video for a minute, take care of a few more things, and I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for this. I want to make sure that everything stays put. And I know some people go ahead and cut these right off. Um, so that's what I'm going to do on this one. You cut right at the line. Because this flap is going to cover it over. So I've watched these made a couple of times. I have not. I've made one before and I don't think I made it using this method. This is an experiment. It's always an experiment, right? And I suppose you could mass make these. Although I'm going to be honest, when I mass make, I can make, you know, like if I'm doing a master board and, and I'm doing the pieces out of it, I can make a few of those and then I'm done. I can't make any more after that. Okay. And then that's going to flop up this way. And this is going to come down this way. And I've got a little bit of extra there, which I will cut off. I didn't cut it quite straight, so let me cut that a little bit straighter. I want to come in just a little bit to that point. There. Let's see how that goes. I want to make sure I'm up here. I'm still a little bit bigger right there. You know, this is when you eyeball it. I don't know that this video will ever see the light of day. There we go. That's going to be that's going to work just fine. Down here, that's going to work just fine. All right, these pieces we will keep for scraps. That little piece can go away. Because you know what, these will make nice tags. You can make tag bases out of those. All right. I'm going to put my glue on my piece here. This is Fabri-Tac. Shoot, let me get my card out. Fold this piece down. Make sure it gets nice and flat against it. Fold this piece down. Make sure that's nice and flat against it. Okay, now here it's going to need, obviously, more Fabri-Tac. There. A little bit of glue gunk. All right, now we'll fold up our flap. Fold 
of our flap. Now with this, the front is not going to get any decoration because the whole point of this is to have this as flat as possible so that the person who's using it as a writing board can have it as a writing board and it can be nice and flat there. So there's going to be no decoration on here. Where is my piece here? And see, that's going to come. I'm, I'm actually just going to flat that in so that this just kind of sits here. What I might choose to do is put a tab on it here to make that a little bit easier to pull out. I do want to decorate this up a little bit. So I have some of this. Um... Let's go ahead and cut that. Where's my pencil? I lost my pencil. I'm going to cut that here and here. Come here. I have to get used to the fact that this flips open from the left. My other one flipped open from the right. And I'm right-handed. So I'm used to flipping it up this way, but this flips up this way. So I'm getting there. Go ahead and round these edges. This is just going to be a background for this. Yeah. Now I could make that a pocket. It, like I said, this is not particularly strong. Maybe I will make that a pocket. Let's take that off of there. And let me get my other hole punch. You know, when you're creating on the fly, you don't necessarily have all your tools immediately available. You have to go get them. I want the bigger hole punch for this. I've been throwing these away thinking there's got to be something I can do with these. And then I saw somebody do something with them. So now I'm saving them. Now, question comes, because this is the time to make that decision. Do I want to put a hole punch in there and then I won't have to put anything on here? I think I do. Okay, I'm going to just I'm going to leave this as a pocket got a glue piece hanging around so I'm going to leave that as a pocket but now that that's there I can see exactly where to put my other hole yeah and I still didn't get it quite straight but you know it'll do all right so now I can I think to get, well once I put it down I'm going to put some washi along here just to make sure that it stays put a little bit better um, so let me go ahead and attach that to the back of this journal I'm coming up just a little bit but I am not I really want this as a flap and I'm trying to get it as close in as I can to the seam it's one of the reasons I do this sort of thing before I sew it so I can get pretty close to the seam and then I have Let's see. I have a couple of different washies here that I have used. I've rediscovered washi. I had been using it a lot and then I kind of got away from it and I've remembered that I have it. I have all these beautiful washies. This one obviously I have not used yet because that's really stuck there. I don't even know if I want to use it. I just want to open up a piece and see what I've got. Okay, that came off completely. Get that off my fingers. 
Sorry about this. It's taking a little bit longer to open up than I expected it to. you got to use your washies or you will lose them because the stickiness doesn't last forever. And then sometimes they peel and they don't, you can't get a whole piece. So you really need to use your washies. Don't just let them sit in a drawer. Use them up. Okay. As is, you know, case in point, if, if I had, I've had this one for about six months or so and haven't used it yet. I really kind of like how that looks. Okay, so we're going to cut a piece of washi that's the full length of the page. There we go. Put my pencil away and put my ruler away because I don't have that much room on my table itself. I have a little piece of tape here that I use to open up my washies. I learned this trick from Carrie the Crafter and I don't know if, who he learned it from or if he came up with it but I am grateful to him for it because it makes it so much easier. Of course I say that and now I can't get it started of course. There it goes. But it really does make it much easier to get things started. Let me set that there and get my glue stick, which of course I always glue it just especially on something like this where I want to make sure that this piece is not going to move. It's going to get a lot of wear and tear. So I want to make sure I'm right up against my seam but I want to make sure I'm not over my seam. There. There we go. Now it's starting to look nice. Okay, let me get my scissors back. Okay, and I'm just going to cut that little bit of washi off. I'm not going to wrap it around because I have lace on the other side. I am, however, going to take that piece of washi and put it on my washi place here. There we go. Eventually, this will get mod podged and made into tags. Waste not, want not. Okay, I'm going to cover up that glue stick. I'm going to cover up this glue. Get rid of my extra washi paper here. Put that away. And there we go. So now... That will just slide in there and live like that. I want to do some more decorating here. I'm not going to try to do that on camera at the moment. I did go over my edge a little bit. I wasn't as straight as I'd hoped I would be, but that's okay. Because what's on the other side? On the other side is the front. Um, so maybe we'll just, you know what? Let's make it look like it was on purpose. And just add another piece of washi right there. Again, use up those washies. Let me see where I want to cut. I need to get another piece of tape because that tape was a little bit old. And this is just regular scotch tape. See how easily that came? I think my other tape was just old. Okay, of course I put my top on my glue. So just so you know, I am not going to be here for the next couple of days. It, I'm going to try to get a couple videos ahead, but um, my husband and I have a trip planned. I will tell you all about it when we return. See, now this is going to look like I meant to do that. So now, when you open it up, there's that real pretty washi there. And then when you're in the back, and you flip it open, there's a real pretty washi there. Obviously, this matches that particular page, so that worked out quite well. And there we go. A writing board made for a new journal. I said I have three journals in progress. I still have the Delft Blue one that I have collected everything for, but at this point, I don't think I'm going to get to it until June. 
because May is booking up very, very fast. I do have this journal that now just up two signatures are complete. I just need to make the cover for it and then I will be posting a walkthrough of this journal um, probably later this week. And hopefully I will get a walkthrough of this journal. This is just a single signature, very short journal. Um, so we'll see where this one goes. And this one, like I said, is still a lot in progress. That one just needs the cover. This one's in progress. And then the Delft journal is probably going to have to wait, the Delft blue one. Because this weekend we are going, I, I'll, be, I'll tell you where we're going. Spoiler alert, we're going to New York City. We're going to see Camelot. I can't wait to see Camelot. It is my second favorite musical. The I played Guinevere in Camelot when I was in high school. I was a senior and it was absolutely wonderful. It's my favorite, second favorite play. One of my favorite parts to ever play. Um, and so we're going to see Camelot. We will be... In, so we're in New York this weekend. I'll tell you a lot more about it next week. Then we are going to go to Alora, Ontario, Canada for a plein air festival. We will be in Alora and Fergus and Guelph, uh, which I found out there is a scrapbook supply store in Guelph that I cannot wait to visit. And we're going to be there not this weekend, but next weekend. And then the weekend after that is the Celebrate Commemorate Festival in Waterloo, where I will have a booth. So it's going to be a very, very busy month. All right, ladies and gentlemen, play safe. Enjoy your day. And this is Cindy signing off.